the killing lust. Two shadowy figures squared off on a desolate place of earth. The sky was dark as the afterworld. Suddenly, one of the shadowy figures pounced. As he rose ten feet straight up, he swung both arms down. Two spiteful flames erupted from the black earth, shooting straight for the figure still on the ground. Two silver flashes crossed. A simple leap made the second figure a sparrow in flight. Faster than the figure in midair could rise to greater heights, the sword came straight down on him, splitting him from the crown of his head to the base of his neck. The wind was stained red. As it slapped bright blood against the black earth, the two figures landed on their feet a dozen yards apart. One of them collapsed, while the other stalked across the ground. Not even bothering to wipe his blade off, the victor returned it to the sheath on his back. There wasn't a speck of gore on it. The wind had a fawning glow, for it had blown across the shadowy figure's face. Deep, dark eyes gleaming beneath the wide-brimmed traveler's hat. The line of a nose that was sure to send tens of millions of artists into despair. Lips that quietly brimmed with a will heavier than anyone would ever know. Tell me your name! D. The figure with his head split in two had called to him. Though already a death mask, his face wore a smile. D. Listen to me. The hem of the black coat hit Dee's face, as if to shield him from the words of the dead, as if to keep him from hearing. A hand in a black glove had knocked his coat out of the way. Oh, so you intend to hear me out? One word will say it all. Of course, for you, that one word might send you to hell. The figure on the ground was an old man with white hair and a white beard. His long robe was woven from metallic threads in a wide range of hues, and its distinctive color scheme declared that even among the nobility, he was a necromancer of some stature. The beautiful figure stood there without saying a word, as if he'd heard these words tens of thousands of times before. The bisected and bloodied face split apart, and the old man raised his hand to hold it together again. Go to Moma. And as he finished speaking, he took his hand away 